I wanted to start by just sharing with you guys something that I'm presently reading that I'm really, really loving. And in fact, this is the kind of stuff that I read over and over and over again because it's powerful. And it comes from your favorite and mine, Neville Goddard. Now, this summer I did a three-part series on Neville's book called Feeling is the Secret. The first two installments of Feeling is the Secret are presently in our Lightworkers Lab Free Metaphysical Library. By the way, if you are not a member of the Free Metaphysical Library, you should be. All you have to do is go to the lightworkerslab.com slash free hyphen library and sign up. At the very bottom, there are two videos uh, called The Manifestation Formula, Part 1 and Part 2 and those go into the work of Neville Goddard, and I'm about to put the third one up in the next week or so, but this also comes from Neville Goddard, and this is out of his book, Resurrection, which is actually a compilation of a few of his different works, and this is from the chapter six, which is the chapter on good tidings, and some of these things just struck me as really important, and this is about manifestation. Neville likes to teach us how to align the conscious thinking with the body and the spiritual feeling, the desires, in order to create the objective reality or that reality that we experience in our lives. What Neville tells us is that anything we experience, whether that's hardship or joy, is first created based on that alignment of consciousness or thinking or intention with the desire or with the actual feeling. This is why so many of our affirmations tend to fall hollow. It's because we are not marrying that which we are seeking to bring into the life with an actual emotion that is a high vibration enough to give it wings to fly and then be created. We say to ourselves, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise, but internally we don't feel healthy, wealthy, or wise. We feel anything but that. And if the feeling is low vibration, and if the feeling is not a match for what it is you're trying to create, then you will not create that. You have to bring the feeling into alignment and you have to raise the vibration of that feeling, which is why he calls his book Feeling is the Secret, because it is. Conscious, important, that's our thinking thought. Subconscious, also important, that's the animator or the creator of our experience, but the transmission happens as a result of our feeling. So he talks to us about that a lot, and I like to just drum it into the community because I believe if we can visualize it, then we can have it. The people perish for a lack of vision. If you can think it, you can create it. And for those of us who spend too many hours in overwhelm, because this world is crazy, y'all, and it is, with so many things that are chaotic and also negative, we get overwhelmed by that. But if we just create a visualization of the world in which we want to live, a world for ourselves, an individual life for ourselves and for our family, but also for Gaia, also for humanity, if we can visualize it in some way and then align that with a high vibration feeling, that's how we can co-create the existence that I believe we are moving into. And that's important. We need to stay on task with that. It's easy in this 3D reality to fall off the rails, to go off the rails in a crazy train, as it were. We gotta bring ourselves back into alignment and remember why it is that we're here. We are here to shift it. There's no other reason you were born at this time in Earth's history, age of Aquarius, if you didn't come here to do something about what we are transitioning into. To that end, let's read a little, book, a little bit again out of chapter 6 of Resurrection by Neville Goddard. He says, The seemingly harmless habit of talking to yourself is the most fruitful or evidential form of prayer. A mental argument with a subjective image of another person is the surest way to pray for an argument to actually happen. How many of you have actually did that, Hans? I've, done, I've spent so much of my life envisioning things I should have said to that person. Or if I see that person again, I'm going to say this, having arguments or creating negative scenarios in our mind. Maybe we're caught up in a conflict of some sort and we're running through different experiences, scenarios, or arguments. What we're actually doing, because we're also feeling low in those moments that we're thinking about it, is creating more opportunities for those negative things to happen. Talking to yourself, thinking to yourself, and letting your thoughts go unchecked is the surest way for you to perpetuate a negative reality if those are negative thoughts in the first place. 
You are asking to be offended by the other when you objectively meet by arguing with them in your mind first. The other person is compelled energetically to act in a manner displeasing to you unless before the meeting you countermand or modify your order by subjectively affirming a change. So if you catch yourself in that loop of negative thinking, which is so common for us, especially with people who do damage to us and we argue with them in our brain or we have negative exchanges, before meeting them, do the work to counteract that or countermand that, which just means do the work to undo it. Start visualizing a different outcome with that person. Start visualizing a positive high vibration interaction with that person in order to not have a negative experience happen. Unfortunately, Neville says, man forgets his subjective arguments the daily mental conversations that he's having with other people and so is ultimately at a loss for an explanation of the conflicts and the misfortunes of his life. What Neville is saying is we're not paying attention. Unfortunately, we're not keeping, we're not keeping up with what the ego mind is telling us. We're letting our thoughts run wild. And so when a string of negative things happen in the life and they seem to continue to happen over and over again, we don't we don't understand that we're creating it because we're not paying attention in the first place. We are praying. We are literally praying and sending a signal to the universe when we indulge these, this type of thinking or any type of thinking, really, if it's married with a feeling. As mental arguments produce conflicts, so do happy mental conversations produce corresponding visible states of good tidings and good experiences. Man creates himself out of his own imagination. If the state desired is for yourself and you find it difficult to accept as true what your senses deny, call before your mind's eye, your imagination, the subjective image of a friend and have him mentally affirm that you are already that which you desire to be. Let me break that down. He speaks in kind of old timey language. What he's saying is, if what you want for yourself is difficult for you to accept as true because of the way your life is set up, your senses deny what it is you're trying to create because you don't have it yet, your senses are saying, you're not rich, are you kidding me? You're not abundant, you're not healthy, it's denying what it is you're trying to create. So if that's the case for you, the Neville is saying, imagine in the mind's eye the imagination or the imaginative image of a friend and have this friend mentally tell you or affirm that you're already that which you desire to be. This establishes in him, your friend, without conscious consent or knowledge, the subconscious assumption that you are that which he mentally affirmed, which assumption, because it is unconsciously assumed, will persist until it fulfills its mission. Its mission is to awaken in you its vibratory correlate, which vibration when awakened in you realizes itself as an objective fact. So if you can't hold it in yourself because your senses are denying too strongly that which you'd like to create, envision having your friend sit down next to you and tell you all of the things about yourself that you would like to be. This places that vibration in the person and that vibration is an energy, it has to do something. The intention of the vibration is to change in you so that you shift. And by having your friend there and holding the vibration for you, it is ultimately transmitted to you. Another very effective way to pray for oneself is to use the formula of Job, who found that his own captivity was removed from him as he prayed for his friends. Therefore, fix your attention on a friend and have the imaginary voice of your friend tell you that he is or has that which is comparable to that which you desire to have for yourself. As you mentally hear and see your friend, feel the thrill of his good fortune and then sincerely wish him well. A lot of us get caught up here when we pray for our friends or we, we ask that they have success and abundance. Some of us have this reverberating tension because we don't have it yet or we don't have it at the level that we like. So we wanna pray for people, but actually really wish them well, really wish them this success. As you mentally hear and see him feel the thrill of his good fortune and wish him well. This awakens in your friend the corresponding vibration of the state affirmed, 
which vibration must then objectify itself as a physical fact. Objectify itself means become reality. This vibration has to do something. It's going to appear in materiality. You will discover the truth of the statement, blessed are the merciful for they have, they shall receive mercy. And the quality of mercy is twice blessed. It blesses him who taketh and him who giveth. Through wishing well on your friend and blessing your friend, you bless yourself. It is twice given each and every time. The good you subjectively accept as true of others will not only be expressed to them and by them, but a full share will also be realized in you. So if you have patterns around envisioning yourself as that which you seek to be, or envisioning your life as that which you seek for it to be, choose a friend instead and wish them well. Start imagining their success and their abundance and their good health. It always guaranteed has a reverberating effect back on you. That blessing is twice given, once to your friend, and also once in full measure, meaning the same amount of blessing is given to you as well. Transformations are never total. Force A is always transformed into more than a force B. A blow with a hammer produces not only a mechanical concussion, but also heat, electricity, a sound, a magnetic change, and so on and so forth. The vibratory correlate in the subject is not the entire transformation of the sentiment communicated. The gift transmitted to another is like the divine measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, so that after the five thousand are fed from the five loaves and two fish, twelve baskets full are left over. Can I read that again? The gift transmitted to another when you're blessing someone else, for example, is like the divine measure, not the human measure, not the let's meet it out as humans, you get some, I get some. No, it is like the divine measure, pressed down, shaken together, and then running over, so that after the 5,000 are fed from just five loaves and two fish, 12 full baskets are left over. That's how spirit works. The takeaway here for you and for me is that the thinking is the most powerful form of prayer. We like to think that prayer looks like begging, don't we? We like to think that it looks like supplication. Let me get down on my knees. Let me run through that rosary and ask for forgiveness because I'm so sinful. We come to source like a beggar and we and source responds with the energy that we bring to it and the way that we feel within ourselves. That's why we have to challenge ourselves to understand the new prayer or really what prayer actually is. It's what we're thinking about and also what we're feeling. It's what we are always creating, whether conscious of this or not. So be mindful of what you're thinking about. Stop yourself a few times a day and check it out. What were you, think about what you were just thinking about. Was it positive or was it negative? Was it something critical about yourself or about other people or about the future or about life? If you find yourself caught up in these negative thoughts, very quickly shift that, change that, turn that into something positive, and then bring up in your energy, your spirit, a complementary high vibration emotion. That's the feeling. Again, Neville Goddard said, the feeling is the secret. The thinking man exists and the subconscious animating female aspect brings it into reality, but it can't do that. It can't bring anything into reality unless it gets the message from the conscious. To get the message, we have to have feeling. It's the vehicle that drives between the two and sends and receives the transmission. Think it and then feel it and then you create it. And if you have issues around self-worth or having a problem looking around your life and seeing all the problems and the conflicts. Therefore, you can't muster up that high vibration emotion that complements the affirmation, then put somebody else in that place. Think of your friend. Think of the success of that one person you truly love no matter what, that you really do want to receive a blessing and give them that blessing. Imagine them in the third eye, in the imaginal mind, in the visualization as succeeding, as receiving all of those things that you would like to bless them with, knowing full well that you receive in return a full measure of the very same blessing. Powerful, right? Powerful. 
Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.